Okay. Um, I see that it's 6.35, so I believe that we can get started. Welcome to the second information session for the uh, Grantham School District meeting. Um, this is a meeting which is authorized pursuant to RSA, I'm sorry, to HB 1129 uh, and to the, by the governor's orders. Um, this is the second information session. The last one we had was a week ago uh, and the board has received um, input from, uh, 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 from the residents of the district um, with respect to the warrant and we're going to continue with that process tonight. Um, in, the uh, public can provide input by chat, by a QA, and a um, which are located at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen if you're participating by Zoom, or by phone, um, or by uh, uh, speaking live at the, uh, at the meeting if you request us to speak live, you can do that through Zoom as well. Um, we do um, note that if you want to ask a question live, we will limit your um, time to three minutes, so please be succinct. Um, everyone who is making a statement to the, to the meeting, whether it's in writing or um, through the Q&A or the chat, uh, please state your name and your uh, residence address. Um, uh, we will go over all the input for each article as it's presented and then at a final time before the end of the meeting before anything additional can come in. Um, so, um, the, uh, the next portion of the meeting will take place on Tuesday next week, which is March 9th, when voting on the, the, the final warrant will, will take place. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can visit the, the website about what your various options are uh, for the actual voting on March 9th. So, the first uh, article Carl, do you want me to put up the slideshow now? Yeah, that would probably be helpful. Okay. <laughs> the first article um, has to do with uh, hearing the reports of agents, committees, and other officers heretofore chosen and pass any vote relating thereto. Um, we're not, there's really no need for, for any feedback on that. That's a required article for every school district meeting. And, uh, um, we don't need to, um, have any additional feedback on that. So I will move right along to article two. I'm going to read the article out, uh, and then ask if there's any, uh, any input from the public, um, or the board about that article. Um, article two is the playground bond issue to see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $500,000 for the renovation of the Grantham Village School playground and to authorize the issuance of not more than $500,000 of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, which is found at RSA 33 and to authorize the school board to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon and further to raise and appropriate an additional sum of $12,500 for the first year's interest payment on the bond. And this is recommended by the school board and a three-fifths ballot vote is required in order to pass. So is there anyone who has any um, questions or input? with respect to Article 2. Here's a nice summary of what we've already received um, uh, from last week. Uh, is there any additional input or questions regarding Article 2? 
And Carl, maybe while folks are um, either pulling their comments together or typing them in, I'll go ahead and read the uh, summary feedback um, and feedback that we received. So this is both the um, comments and feedback and questions from last Monday, as well as any that we received between now or then and now. Um, and we had a, a, enough of a limit, limited feedback that we can um, read these in their entirety tonight. And so this is the feedback that was given. So, um, and this is only pertaining to this article, article two. So from Debra, Debra Margolis Cheever at 31 Allen's Drive, I am against the $500,000 bond for a new playground. These are tough times and that is a huge amount of money. Also the fire department is asking for a new fire truck and this is needed more than another playground. From Jeff Walla, Walker Road, it's inconsistent that the board would like the like community input on the importance and support of the bond while at the same time, the board and or playground committee making the decision to suspend any fundraising efforts in light of the financial impact of the pandemic on residents. This more than anything will likely drive my decision. There are two other bonds the town's proposing, one of which is a fire truck, which has an immediate impact on safety of all residents. We need to ensure we don't put the town and district at odds or in competition with each other. Nicole Mason, 464 Burpee Hill Road. Article two is asking for $500,000 because the current playground is unusable most of the school year due to drainage issues. About half of the funds requested would be used for the new playground and the other half for site work to fix the drainage problems. Can the article be rewritten to include that about half of the funds will be used to fix drainage problems? My concern is that it will be voted down because of a misconception that it is only for a new play structure and therefore overpriced. And then from the same, um, same individual, how old is the current playground equipment and when would it need to be replaced even if the site work didn't need to be done? Superintendent Leggett replied that replacing the equipment would need to be done piecemeal and based on Primex, the school's insurance company recommendations and ADA compliance requirements. Cindy Kovold, 95 Jericho Road. When does the bond come up for a vote in March? And then this was the response um, from uh, during the last meeting. Superintendent Leggett replied, yes, March 9th. Is the board anticipating any additional work over the next five years that needs to be done to the building or property? And again, the response during the meeting, Superintendent Leggett stated that the brickwork on the building will need maintenance, but that is all they are anticipating at this time. Um, Cindy Towell, 77 um, Cody Road. I have always supported and voted for a school budget for our children, but this request seems irresponsible at this point in time. Times are financially tough and the justification of a smaller interest rate is not enough to do the bond. The fire department is asking for a new much needed fire truck and I'm willing to support their request and they are using a capital reserve for part of the payment. As a retiree, I would prefer that my social security increase goes to a fire truck that might rescue my house. Joel Hutchins, Robin Lane, are the, issue, are the issues are mostly septic and who is engineering the project? And then a response was provided during the meeting. Superintendent Leggett responded that issues are drainage and septic and they do not know who the engineer for the project will be. Mr. Hutchins has researched surrounding playgrounds. He estimated that a playground for 247 children should cost roughly $1,000 per child or $247,000 total. He asked if the remaining 250,000 would be used for the site work. Superintendent Leggett stated that they did anticipate extensive site work because of septic and drainage issues. He asked given the current pandemic in his opinion, if it could wait. And I responded that the previous board meeting the board did take into consideration if now was a good time to put a bond article out for a vote, but with each resident using their voice with a vote for or against residents could decide if now was the time. Peter James, Split Rock Road. Mr. James informed residents that the town is putting forth two $500,000 bonds, one for major repairs to Miller Pond Road and the second for a new fire truck. He described Miller Pond Road as the biggest money pit the town has right now and almost impassable during the spring. He described the fire truck as 21 years old and only partial, partially functional. The total cost of the fire truck will be roughly $650,000, but the rest would come from the capital improvement fund. He asked that if residents were going to vote for all three, then fine. If residents are going to vote for two, then vote for the Miller Pond Road and fire truck bonds. And if residents are only going to vote for one, then make it the fire truck. Jeff Roundsville, 31 Hummingbird Hill. Where did the $500,000 $500, estimate originate? 
And then that was asked during the meeting and Superintendent Leggett responded that the playground companies do use an estimate of roughly $1,000 per child and the rest would be needed for site work. The estimate for site work came from three different landscape architects and they looked at more natural playgrounds. Superintendent Leggett showed pictures of slides built into hills and rocks used for climbing that will aid in drainage. What if the costs run beyond $500,000? And again, it was answered during the meeting, Superintendent Leggett responded that the total they would have included fund, including fundraising would be $600,000 and the project would not go over that, which is part of the advantage of securing the costs upfront so that they could control it. If for any reason, something major had to happen, they could try to stage out what would be the priorities and then go back to what could be done at a later time. Superintendent Leggett would hope this would not happen. Jerry Volpe, Pinehurst Drive, he is very much in support of this bond issue. Serving as a member of the playground committee, he knows it has been looked at from a number of angles and this is the best, best path forward. Some of the site work will be required regardless if he is not mistaken. So the sooner we move forward on funding, the sooner we can address the needs and prep for the actual new play structure. Dave Seisel, Stocker Pond Road, what difference will the drainage work make in the winter time? It was answered during the meeting. Superintendent Leggett responded that currently the area is a skating rink in the winter because of standing frozen water in the area. The teachers wear yak tracks during recess to be safe, but there are far too many days that the playground must be completely closed for safety reasons. A few other things to consider is the playground does not have what a school would consider sufficient ADA access for students with disabilities, and that would be part of the design as well. Asked to check years since it stated years two to six for bond, and during the meeting, Superintendent Leggett responded that it reads years two through six because the first year the payment is just the interest at $12,500. $12, David Wood rode around the lake. Would you give us some specifics on why the playground cannot be located up in the hill in the forest? Secondly, where is the septic lo located? And then that was asked during the meeting and Superintendent Leggett replied, she did not know exactly where the septic system is located, but she can provide the answer at a later time. The playground being located up the hill in the forest would, from every landscape architect who did come to look at the site op opinion, be cumbersome. We would be clear cutting trees and we would have a playground located on a hill or we would have to flatten it. Also, the kids would have to go across the road in the parking lot instead of having direct access to and from school. So there would be a significant safety issue. Superintendent Leggett stated they don't know if they need to move the septic system. That would be up to the landscape architect, but they do know there are substantial issues. Is there an alternative location for the playground that would not require the septic and tank work? Superintendent Leggett answered that there is property across the street and wetlands adjacent to the school. Neither option is viable. So the existing space next to the school is the best option. Liz Borger, Beaver Falls Glen, has addressing the drainage been considered as a budget item if the playground bond doesn't pass? This was asked during the meeting and Superintendent Leggett responded that the board would need to reassess everything after the March vote if it does not pass. Uh, she also asked what fundraising had already been done and Superintendent Leggett replied that $25,000 was received as a grant from the Dorothy Byrne Foundation and 5,000 from a coin drive and other fundraisers. The playground committee wanted to match the $50,000 approved in the Warren article, this was last year, but realized that fundraising during COVID was not an appropriate thing. Superintendent Leggett hopes that fundraising can continue over the next year. And then there was a statement uh, again from Liz that the equipment was installed in 2006. Lynn Hill from Bright Slope Way um, commented that only the red and gold climbing pieces were added in 2006. The original equipment is much older. Okay. Um. I have a comment here in, in chat from Jerry Volpe. Um, uh, he, and he says, upon reflecting on the discussion of last week's session and the explanation of some of the nature of this article, I wonder if the name shouldn't be changed to reflect that it isn't just a matter of new playground equipment, but significant site work and drainage issues. I would suggest updating the title of the the title or wording of the Warren article to better reflect the nature of this. Okay. And I'm not seeing any other responses or questions in chat or the Q&A. Um, 
I don't know if anyone else wanted to speak to this. I, thank you, Brittany, for that um, uh, explanation of everything that we heard last last week. <laughs> so. uh, Pearl, we do have a hand up. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move in, um, Mr. James. Okay. Am I on? Yes. You're I, on. Thank you. I, and I'm going to only basically repeat what I said last week because I'm not sure whether we have any new people watching or not. But uh, my comment last week, which uh, Brittany just read, but I will re restate it, is that there are two other bond issues from the town for $500,000 a piece. Uh, if, if you feel one is for a uh, $500,000 worth of work, road work on Miller Pond Road, which is, as I said before, the biggest money pit as far as the road department goes in Grantham. The second is to replace a 21-year-old 20, fire truck, which is only partially functional and which requires uh, some unique operational uh, uh, operations as far as how the fire department attacks the fire. A new pumper has been stacked. Bids have been sent out and received. Total cost of that is uh, roughly six hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, and the additional money beyond the five hundred thousand will come from capital reserve. And uh, I, I would highly recommend that if you only can vote for one of these five hundred thousand dollar articles this year, that you please vote for the fire truck. It, it is critical. It's critical to the life and safety of the people in Grantham. And uh, I realize that while uh, interest rates are low and we'd like to buy as much as we can, I, I do ask that you place that as the top of your priority. Miller Pond Road costs us tens of thousands of dollars each year in repairs and temporary repairs to try and make it passable during the spring. We really need to start working on this to get it under control. So if you're gonna vote for two, I'd ask for the fire truck and Miller Pond Road. And then if you really feel generous, you can go for all three and that's fine, but I please ask that you put the priorities aside. Fire truck, Miller Pond Road, school bond issue. Thank you for your time. I have another meeting to go to. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Um, th those other bonds, I just want to point out, and this was pointed out at the last meeting, will not be voted on for the town until May of, of this year, because the town meeting has been pushed off until until May. Um, so um, I have one other comment, and this is from um, Tanya McIntyre. Um, she says the contractors for the new um, playground, will they be public or private business establishments? I don't know if anyone on the board or the superintendent. I can answer that. Um, it's an open bid process. The policy of the district is that it's a completely open bid. So both any kind of contractor can bid on it and uh, the board would just come up with the bid criteria and go from there. Anything that is subcontracted out that's over $10,000 also goes out to bid. Okay, thank you. Um, and there's a question from Maria Dahlman, um, who I happen to know is up on Dumber Hill Road, so I'm going to fill that in. Um, um, wasn't a topography assessment addressed when the playground was, I, I believe, first built? Um, I don't know if anyone can answer that. And, and, and what, furthermore, why wasn't the septic issue addressed when the playground was built? I'm sure there's a long history there, and I know little things that I've heard over the decades, but I, I don't want to speak to that in an authoritative way. <laughs> I do know that the playground um, and the drainage and septic issues were all discussed with the big renovation for the school when they were talking back in you know 2008 and even before then. Um, and the, it was considered to, to be at too high of a cost and the priority went to the building renovation. Um, that's also one of the things that would actually be 
in favor of thinking about doing it now just because we know that it the longer we wait the more expensive that it gets um, but yes this is a problem that people have known about for i don't know at least 15 to 20 years maybe longer yeah. i think probably it was not as serious a problem before the last major addition um, because i'm sure that that um, that that decreased the space that was available for the playground and it probably had an impact on the drainage in the area too but that's just my off the top of my head recollection okay i'm not seeing any further questions or chats so it seems to me that we can move on to article three and I will um, I will read Article Three entirely, and then we can uh, take uh, comments after that. Article Three is the operating budget to see if the district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of ten million two hundred ninety-one thousand one hundred and one dollars for the support of schools, for the payment of salaries for the school district officials and agents, and for the payment of the statutory obligations of the district, and to authorize the application against appropriations of such sums as are estimated to be received from state and federal governments, together with other income, the balance to be raised by taxation by the school district. This article does not include appropriations contained in special or individual articles addressed separately. And this is recommended by the Grantham School Board. And a simple majority is uh, required in order to pass this article. So um, are there any questions or does the board want to address this again? I, I think that we've already addressed this at the last meeting. Um, I have one comment here again from Maria Dahlman, um, which is just a thank you for the response by Carl and Sydney with respect to the uh, playground bond. Are there any other? Um, there's one other comment by Jerry Volpe of Three Pinehurst. Uh, one other comment, if I may, is that the community told us that, it, oh, I'm sorry, this is going back to the playground. Um, uh, I, I'm, I apologize if that's a little late, but I just want to kind of keep order here and I'm going to not read out that comment, that chat. Um, we are now considering any comments or um, questions about the operating budget which we went over last week. Um, and I will try to keep the forum open for um, a minute or so in case somebody wants to pose a question. Sydney, I guess you have control if somebody's trying to get into the um, the meeting through Zoom, right? But I'm not seeing anybody. While we're waiting, I'll read this. I, I believe it's just the one. We just had one uh, comment from, uh, from our comment summary of feedback, and this was from the last meeting. So Jerry Volpe, Pinehurst Drive, stated that he has been following each of the last several board meetings as components of this operating budget have been discussed and put together. And he believes the board has put forth a very responsible and reasonable budget for the continued success of our school. Thank you all for your efforts to get us here. So that was the only comment that we had um, received at the last meeting and from that meeting till today. Right. Um. Um, I, I have another um, late comment regarding the playground. Um, and, and I'm just going to call say that that's out of order at this time because we're, we've already moved on to the next article. Um, uh, 
So with that, I think we can. I think there is a, a chat about Article 3 about the operating budget. Well, I see one. There's a chat from Jerry Volpe regarding the playground. Um, and there are actually two chats from Jerry Volpe regarding the playground. And then there's a, um, and then, oh, I see. There, there's a chat from Elizabeth Strobridge of Meadowbrook. Um, and she asks, how is the budget percentage wise different from past years? So probably Sydney can answer this question off the top of her head. I can. Um, thanks, Elizabeth. It's a 2.77% increase. Okay. And that assumes passage of the bond. Yes. Yep. I believe, but let me just double check that with Karen. Karen, does that assume? No, it, that's not including oh, the bond. Okay. okay. So without the bond, it's 2.7%? Yeah. But next year for the bond, I believe our only fiscal responsibility would be 12,500. Is that correct? Just the first year's okay. interest. Okay. So the, the school operating budget is 2.77% increase. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments regarding the article three of the operating budget? Okay, then we can move on to Article 4. Um, again, I will read the article in, in its entirety, and uh, then I will try to keep the floor open for a reasonable period of time for people to comment or ask questions. Article 4, <clears throat> the Authorized Regional Enrollment Agreement, or Area Agreement, Amendment and Renewal to see if the school district will vote to amend the existing Grantham Lebanon Plainfield Authorized Regional Enrollment Agreement, otherwise known as the Area Agreement, between the Grantham Lebanon and Plainfield School Districts, which provides for the continued education of Grantham's middle and high school students, grades seven through 12, at Lebanon Middle School and Lebanon High School, and further to approve the renewal of the Area Agreement for a term of 10 years to commence on July 1, 2021 and expire on June 30, 2031, in accordance with the proposed area agreement on file with the district clerk. And this is recommended by the Grantham School Board. Okay. There were two statements in favor of the area agreement citing benefits um, of Lebanon to our students and the work that went into negotiating this agreement. Um, and we, we got a fair amount of information about that agreement um, and the amendments to it uh, during the last uh, during the last meeting last week. Um, and specifically, Lynn Hill said, we would be crazy not to do this because Lebanon High School is wonderful. And Jerry Volpe said, thanked the board for all the effort that went into the revised agreement. So is there anyone else who would like to comment or ask questions about um, Article 4 and the area agreement? It's funny how we just have this real ad aversion to dead air, but that's, <laughs> I really think we need to get comfortable with that a little bit. I have a, a question that's from an anonymous attendee. Can you please state your name? Oh, I'm sorry, there it is. Okay, this is from Tanya McIntyre. 
um, on Route 10. And she asks, um, if a student has an educational disability um, who, whose needs require out of district programming, but not special ed, what is the procedure for asking for reassignment? I, I suppose to another um, facility where they could um, receive education. Does, would someone from the board want to address that or the superintendent? And Sid, Sydney says she would like to answer that. Well, I, I'm happy if somebody from the board wants to answer it, but I can also answer it as well. So what, what would the board like to, me to do? Go right ahead. Okay. So there's a few different avenues. If you're talking about um, specifically not a special education out of district placement, there are two avenues. And one is called a best interest reassignment, which is when um, at parents' requests and between superintendents and school boards, there's an agreement that a student can, um, in their best interest, attend another local public high school. And um, then the other option is a manifest education hardship, which is where um, there would be an appeal to the board stating that the student needed to be reassigned to another school under a manifest ed education hardship, that that would be the only way that that student would be able to access education. And then it is up to the board to grant that request. So those are the those are the two non-special education avenues. Okay. Thank you. And Sydney, feel free to chime in, but I believe um, those options were not modified or impacted th during the area um, negotiations. So the area agreement that's um, it, within Article Four does not change or alter those options. Right. It, the, the only language in there is um, there's a lot of legislation happening with best area, best interest reassignment and manifest education hardship. So the language in the area agreement is that it will follow whatever the current law is. Okay. I'm not seeing any other questions popping up here um, in the meantime. So I think we are um, drawing to a close. Um, uh, we're, we're not going to take any input on Article 5, which is to transact other business, uh, which may come before the annual meeting. Um, uh, I do want to remind everyone that the uh, voting will take place on Tuesday. March 9th, um, and you can, if you have questions about how to vote, either absentee or um, uh, in person or drive through, all of those options are um, laid out for you at the uh, SAU website. Um, uh, and just another reminder that the, um, the voting, I'm sorry, the, the, the town meeting is not going to occur until May 15 this year, which is unusual, but uh, um, we're authorized to do that. And the town's made that decision to, uh, um, to postpone the meeting until May in hopes that it would be easier to um, have it uh, with the COVID situation a little bit later. Um, So I think that we are at the end of our meeting. Um, the, at this point, the board does need to, and, and to take our votes and move these um, in so, their final form to the warrant. Right. So do you, so you'll manage that part of polling the board for their approval of the warrant articles. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Okay, so at this point, uh, we'll do take up Article One, and so I would entertain a motion to move Article One as written to the warrant. So moved. So I have a motion from Jody, and I'll need a second. Second. 
I have a second from Denise and these votes will be done by roll call because we are in a, the virtual meeting format. Um, and so if you, those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed say nay. So Jody. Aye. Denise. Aye. Leslie. Aye. Christine. Aye. Brittany, aye. Okay, and so the motion passes. And so at this point, I will entertain a motion to move the playground bond article two to the warrant as written. Um, we'll open um, the- Brittany? Sure, ask, yeah. Are we going to be discussing this at all? Yes, so we can we can have the, make the motion and then we can open discussion. So once we have a motion in a second, if there's any discussion that needs to take place, we can open that discussion at that point. Okay. We won't go right into the vote. So if we'll have a motion to um, move the playground, article two, the playground bond to the, the warrant as written. Um, so moved. And I have a motion from Denise and I'll need a second. Oh, it's me. So I'm gonna, I'll second uh, Denise's motion. And um, so we'll vote, we'll do a roll call again. So all those in favor, please say aye. If any are opposed, say nay. Denise. Aye. Jody. Nay. Okay. Leslie. Nay. Christine. Oh, I'm sorry. We were going to discuss this. We were to discuss rewarding. I apologize. Yes. We were I wondered discuss. what was happening. <laughs> no, that's totally my fault. I'm very used to that. I withdraw my calling for the vote. So yes, we are going to discuss. Thank you. I, I apologize. I'm so used to us rolling right into our votes. Um, so yes, so we have a motion on the floor to move the playground bond as stated, and I would like to open it up for the, the discussion at this point. Would anyone like to start the conversation about Article 2, the playground bond? Ms. Jody and I just uh, showed our hands real quick. Um, I'll jump in. I do think the suggestion for altering the language to reflect that it's not just playground equipment is very, is very well put. Um, I'm not sure that I am equipped to propose the right language, but I certainly would like it to say playground and site work or something like that. So that it conveys to the voters that this is like a, <laughs> we're not just putting in new monkey bars. Um, I'll, I'll go next. So I have to be honest, when we first started talking about this, it was sitting not well with me. I, I know your ladies are aware of this. It wasn't sitting well with me that we didn't think it was appropriate to fundraise, but we thought it was appropriate to ask the taxpayers. Um, but I understand that that was it. We were asking the taxpayers. It wasn't part of the budget. And so we weren't taking the chance of compromising the budget, which really, really is important. Our school, our district has to function. Um, but with that said, I feel, and I'm, I'll take the blame for me on this one. I, I didn't do my due diligence in education. I did not realize when we talked about this two months ago that the town had what appears to be two very important bonds coming forward. And I'm concerned with the feedback that we're receiving that it, it is irresponsible of us to bring something forward um, and put the 1.5 million burden on the taxpayers at this time. Um, with that said, to everyone listening, it, it has to happen eventually. It really does. The, the, the playground needs better drainage. Um, it's not equipped for older children. It's not equipped for children with special needs, but is now the time. And, and we are the stewards of the money for the town. So what we present forward really needs to reflect what we feel is best for the town. And I'm not speaking for anyone else here, but I'm, I'm just not sure this is best. I'm not sure that we should be doing this, that perhaps maybe we need to pull back we need to um, maybe take some time, hire an um, engineer with the money from the budget, hire an engineer, and then go back to grant writing and fundraising and then come back to the town. And, and Sydney, I know we've talked about this before, but what is the average rate? It, it's about a percent, percent and a half higher in typical years, correct? I, I really don't want to guess on interest rates right now because, I mean, it, in but if, if we were to look at previous rates, it wasn't that much higher, I don't believe. I don't think that it was too much of a difference that it was like night and day, if I remember correctly. It just so depends our, on so many things, Jody. though. Our yeah. last, um, I looked up just the last bond we got, which was quite a while ago for the school, and that one started at 8%, and then we refinanced it for 5%. Okay. Um, and that was the last bond the school district took out. So that's my only comparison right now. I don't know. I mean, 
this is just how I'm feeling. And, and I really loved the fact that we were putting it back to the taxpayers, but with the feedback we've been getting, I, I'm concerned that maybe we, that wasn't a responsible decision. Jody, I'll only say that I, I agree with you and that I think putting all three bond issues in front of the voters is to me the most responsible thing and letting them vote. Uh, because I think we've heard from concerned parties super appropriately, like these are their concerns. I. I hope that we don't have three bonds that we're paying off as a taxpayer. However, the playground would be my top priority because it's not only the kids getting out to play, it's also frankly protecting all of our investments in our property. If we kick the can down the road, you know, we have a school where kids can't play outside for part of the year. And you could make the argument that we've um, mitigated that over the years. I hear that and I don't dispute it entirely. On the other hand, it, it, it get, brings me some shame in the winter when you go by the school, like if I was coming in from another town, I'd be like, where are the kids? What's happened? Why are they not outside? It just, for me, it doesn't match with our values within GBS and within the Grantham district. So I think you're right to say this is, the three bond issues are huge, would be a real burden to the taxpayers, but we'll, I think we should let them vote on it. Um, they might, you know, taxpayers might vote it down, the playground bond. And then that was our goal is to gauge, you know, gauge the appetite within the community for it. Um, I, I'd like to offer that when we were talking about the playground um, bond, at that time, I was not aware of the two big bonds coming from the town with the fire truck and Miller Pine Road. And that gave me a lot of concern to ask the same question, is it the right time? Do I think it's important? Yes. But I, I agree with Leslie in that. I think the town should have an opportunity to vote on these bonds and um, make the most responsible decisions that we can as taxpayers. I agree that the voters should set the priorities on among the three bonds. Okay. Other discussion or feedback from the board? I would um, agree with a lot of what all of you have said, and I think it really does. It's a good reflection of what we've heard from the community. I think, um, you know, we've heard it came up during the the candidates night. Um, you know, it came up. It's come up in, in a lot of just informal conversations that I've heard folks having. Um, and I think we are it is just a, a good reminder as well that we are heading into nearly year. Well, I want to say five or five almost six, four or five that we've been talking about the playground. Um, it came to us originally from a student. And I think that was about five years ago that a student brought it to the board. Um, and it was, so it is something that the board and has been looking at and that the, the school community has been discussing through the strategic planning process. So we've been building to this point for a number of years through conversation. And I think um, I, I share the sort of the mixed feelings of, and, and I agree, I was not aware that the town would have those bond, additional bonds coming forward too. Um, and I, but I do think that as a separate ballot initiative, as a separate bond, we are doing our due diligence to put it out to the, to the town to say as a separate issue, does the town feel that this is a priority and something that could move forward um, or should move forward this year? Um, so I think with that said, I'm still in support of maintaining the, uh, the article as it stands. And I do agree, Leslie, I think um, maybe reframing the language in the bond is important to include that it is site work as well as playground, um, that it isn't simply just playground structure. I was just gonna jump in. I pulled, I just pulled up the article. And so should I make a, um... I don't Let need to pull. make a motion, do I? Yeah, no. Let me pull it up, Leslie, and then I yeah. can, because okay. we have to approve what's going on tonight. So um. so I'll just throw it out there. Um, I would say, I would offer that the, art, the, the headline playground bond issue should read playground and perhaps site safety, or I'd, I'd really like to emphasize the safety aspect. I think people hear like, oh, well, our monkey bars are old, but that's not really what the problem is, in my opinion. Um, so I'd love to see the word site work and safety 
in the headline somehow and right. maybe Sydney has some op I was just thinking of engineering because that's really the big mm -hmm. thing is the site engineering. Yeah. Kristen, I wonder if you might have an opinion too. <laughs> Put you on the spot. No, I think that sounds good. I think it definitely should be put out there that it's more than just the, the structures that the kids play on. Um, site engineering sounds good, I think. Do you want to add anything in the text? So it's renovation and um, something like improved access or mention that we want to have greater access or access and safety. Yeah, I feel pretty strongly. I'd like to see safety somewhere like headlined. Um, that's really my par parental concern. Sydney, do you want to do uh, for the renovation, comma, improved access and safety of the Grantham Village School? So we don't have so many ands in there. Thank you. And Isabel had a nice comment in the chat, site engineering and playground safety bond issue. Do, do we wanna put that in? I like it. And full credit goes to Christy Peck for that. <laughs> But does that, um, I like that, but does that now make it sound like it's not for the the playground stuff that we're looking at, the natural playground? I, I don't think it deviates because it doesn't say what kind of playground would be designed. I mean, one of the things that I want everybody to be really aware of is that we cannot, I don't think we have, but we can't do anything that changes the original intent of right. the warrant article. I don't think we've crossed that line, but just to keep that in mind for everyone. Does anybody want any other changes? So Brittany, with the crickets, should I make a motion to a new motion to accept or to put article two as amended on the warrant? Yep. That's, that's what, yep. I, that's my motion. Okay. So we have a, we have a motion from Leslie and if folks are ready, we would need a second. I'll second. I have a second from Christine and any further discussion of this item. Okay, not hearing any, we'll go with a vote. And so we will vote by roll call. If you're in favor, please say aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Jody? Nay. Denise? Aye. <laughs> Leslie? Aye. Christine? Aye. And Brittany, aye. Okay, thank you. All right, just, so we'll go. Brittany, yeah. can, I, can we just do a double check with Carl as the moderator? Are you comfortable that no intent was changed? Yeah, I, absolutely. I think it's just okay. a thorough description of what was originally proposed. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, the original language is all in there still, right. just some additions. Okay, so we'll move to Article 3, which is the operating budget. And so um, I will pay better attention to what I'm saying this time. And we'll need a motion to move the article as written to the warrant. So moved. And I have a motion from Leslie. And we need a second. Second. And I have a second from Christine. And we'll open a discussion for the operating budget. And if there is a discussion, if anyone would like to start the discussion on the Article 3, the operating budget.
I'm watching all of your little microphones stay red, which tells me you don't have anything you need to say. I would just say I appreciate uh, folks just in the community engaging with that and the feedback we did receive. Um, I think the article that we just discussed was uh, the, the hotter topic um, for this particular set of information sessions, but as we all know, the operating budget is where we are able to move forward. So I appreciate folks still um, giving attention to uh, the operating budget and careful consideration of it. So with that said, we'll call for a vote and we'll do it by roll call. And if you're in favor, please say aye. And if you're opposed, say nay. Jody? Aye. Denise? Aye. Leslie? Aye. Christine? Aye. And Brittany? Aye. All right. And we'll go to Article 4. And so we'll need a motion to move Article 4, the area agreement, um, as written to the warrant. So moved. I have a motion from Christine, and I'll need a second. Second. And a second from Jody. And so I'll open discussion if there's anyone that would like to discuss the area agreement warrant article. Now's the time. Okay, not hearing any, we'll go for our vote. And so we'll roll call. And if you're in favor, please say aye. And any opposed, say nay. Christine? Aye. Leslie? Aye. Jody? Aye. Denise? Aye. And Brittany? Aye. All right, and our remaining article is Article 5 the hearing of any other business. And so I will make a motion to move article five as written to the warrant and we'll need a second. Second. And I have a second from Leslie and any discussion of article five? Okay, we'll take a vote, we'll roll call. And if you're in favor, please say aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Jody? Aye. Leslie? Aye. Christine? Aye. Denise? Aye. And Brittany, aye. All right. Brittany, is it all right if I pull up the warrant for a minute just to go over one final thing? Absolutely. Okay, thanks. Um, one thing I really wanted to share with everybody is that this is what the alternative ballot is going to look like, and there's two. So there's one ballot that's separate for the bond, and then there's one that has the other articles on it. I just wanted um, for full transparency because Articles one and five don't actually move to the warrant. We have to do them for the annual meeting because we have the annual meeting, but it's not something that on voting day, anybody would have any voting impact. So when, any, when everybody sees the ballot, um, what they're gonna see that I really wanna highlight is this first question. Um, and I really wanna try and get the word out about this first question, which is, um, do you approve of the optional meeting procedures for this annual meeting as set and posted by the school board pursuant to HB 1129? And it's yes or no. So basically we need a majority saying yes to have all of um, our annual meeting and all of the ballot voting on March 9th to count and be legal. So I wanna emphasize that this doesn't mean that you are approving or not approving any individual article. This first question is very important because what it does is it means that you're agreeing that this is your meet, that this is your vote for the annual meeting. Um, so that I really wanted to highlight that for everybody. And then what everyone will see on the ballot is article three, the operating budget, article four, the area agreement, and then article two is on this separate playground bond because bonds always have to be on a separate ballot. So when people come, they'll be getting two ballots, two different colors with all the articles. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So what about article, article one and five, the standard stuff? So that's basically the, something that was covered in our information sessions because there would be no impact on voting for either of those on voting day. So we, we've covered them and we've discussed them and we've heard all of the other business and accepted reports and everything. Um, but on voting day, they wouldn't have any impact on anything that happens for the annual meeting. You know, for example- I'm if fine with shorter. <laughs> sorry, it was shorter. <laughs> for example, if somebody, you know, what would happen if article one like failed or something like it, it, it wouldn't do anything. You know, we've already done all of the hearing of, of everybody's 
um, statements and concerns. Okay. So I think all we have left to do is close the public information session. And I think, is that me or is that Carl? Do I get to hand it back to Carl for a minute? Um, yeah, hand it back I, to Carl. I'm obviously <laughs> happy to do that. Uh, so I will, um, as moderator, close the second public information session for the Grantham School District meeting um, pursuant to House Bill um, 1159. And uh, um, I will call this meeting uh, to be adjourned. All right, thank you. And if folks here are watching, you can stick around because we're staying right here for a school board meeting. So um, we all have fun. <laughs> we'll take a quick commercial break to say bye to Carl and say thank you. Thank Thanks, you for Carl. moderating this very unusual year. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thanks, Carl. <laughs>